it's about a, an architect who lives in Paris and has three air hostess fiancés. And they don't know about each other, and they're all convinced that he's the one for them mm -hmm. and they're the one for him. And in those days, to be an air hostess uh, was a very glamorous, um, extraordinary job. You had to retire at 25. You weren't allowed to get married. So they were the creme de la creme okay. of the glamorous young women and looking for a husband. So to find a fiancé, a respectable, lovely architect living in Paris, was very important to them. So that's how we begin. And who are you? I'm not one of the air hostesses, sadly. I'm the miserable old housekeeper. Okay. Well, middle-aged housekeeper. <laughs> and what's her motivation? Her motivation... <laughs> well, she Bad was inherited thing. with the flat. Um, okay. So when um, the architect first took on the flat, she came with it. Pretty much the origins of, uh, of, of TV comedy as well, though, isn't it? Farce. Of course it is, yes. Like all the... Um, the uh, sketch shows that I've done on television, they came, as far as I'm concerned, from review, sure. which isn't in the theatre anymore, but th it's topical, it has songs as well as sketches, and that was what review was, mm. which is why it's such fun to do. I always ask this question, and I'm, I'm getting bored of me asking it now. Oh, but will I be bored when I hear it? No, probably no, not, right, but you'll okay. have heard it before. Oh, as long as it's about me. You yeah, know, we're absolutely like all about you. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer more? Because somebody that's, that we recognise from the that screen... That is boring, yes. And it's boring <laughs> as hell, isn't it? And somebody who's on stage at I the moment... I thought you were going to say, how do you learn your lines? Um, no, it's not boring at all. I, there's no comparison, so I love both. Okay. I really do truly love both. I mean, in television, a lot of the work is done for you, mm. but then the audience doesn't choose who it looks at and what it sees. That's sure. all done by the director and the cameraman. Hello, hello. But in theatre... Um, you do everything yourself, your makeup and get dressed and whatever. But when you're on stage, it's up to the audience to, to make decisions about what they're watching and what story they're following and, and what's going on. And if it's well directed, obviously they're all going to look at the same thing at the same sure. time. But, and you tell a story from beginning to end. What could be nicer? In television, inevitably, well, I can remember in Coronation Street, Keith Duffy and I had a scene. Well, just go straight in there with Coronation Street. Um, we had a scene which was quite tense, and at the end of it, he said, I never thought it was going to be like that. I said, well, that'll inform your next scene when you go and propose to Sunita, I think, is what he was going to do. He said, oh, we filmed that last week. Yeah, and that's so that's all out of order. Yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose the immediacy is the thing with theatre. Yeah. And the reaction as well. Do you notice <gasps> different reactions around the country? I mean, uh, are we regionally reactive differently? No. Um, d night to night, yes. Right. And very often Monday uh, can be... I rather like Mondays because it's people who've made a big effort to be at the theatre. Would you go on a Monday? No, you'd think, well, you know, end of the week, it'd be nice to have something to cheer us up. Uh, but people who go on the Monday are real... Th avid theatre goers, unless it's two for one, in which case they're just cheapskates. But anyway, Monday's over, so I can say that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or they're press. And or they're, they're cheapskates as well. <laughs> like, have they got in for nothing? Absolutely. Half the reason How that they go. They? Oh, but very often, the audience on a Saturday night starts quite slowly, because they're tired. OK. Yeah. And, um, you know, There'll Friday no night, they, you know, they've just got their pay packet. And you know. but, uh, but Saturday evening, you know, they, oh, come on, please make me laugh. And then by the end, they're helpless, because they've enjoyed themselves and they've got exactly what they wanted and they haven't been disappointed. Thank God I can say that hand on heart in the show. Mm. Heart, heart. Heart. Wherever your heart is, <laughs> it might be different for you. Now, uh, as I'm on a roll now with boring questions... Um, How do you learn your lines? Given your family, um, was it just inevitable that you'd end up on the stage? I suppose so. At the time, I didn't think so. Um, you mean the Millses? I mean the Millses, the Millses yeah. Um, who nobody knows now, by the way. Uh, when I was in Corrie, they didn't know who Hayley Mills was. Really? Or, you know, the babies. You know, so, so, People weren't so singing we're Muffin talking... the Mule at you at any <laughs> given moment. No, but you're not remotely old enough. Oh, you no, too. No, no, but or I've something. studied Computers. television, haven't I? Of course you have. First television children's programme. Um, <clears throat> yes, when I was um, eight, I was sent off to Elmhurst Ballet School where Juliet and Haley already were. So I got in half price, two for one. <laughs> oh, God, I love so that. I can't talk about cheap skates, but I didn't pay. Honestly, so eight o'clock, eight o'clock, eight years old, I went there and stayed there till I was 13. Then I went to arts educational. Okay. Still no education. And uh, then I left there when I was 17 and went to Lambda, the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. Still no education. So I have 
I mean, I can barely read, and okay. I certainly can't add. I'm trying now to, you know, as you get to my grand old age, you think, you know, before I die, I really should understand. My son's given me a computer for Christmas, and we're all dying for me to turn it on. <laughs> Still no luck. <laughs> Mm -mm. You've worked with some tough directors and tough individuals, and I'm, I'm referring now, I'm, I'm going down a Victoria Wood road. Not that she's so tough a director, but as, as you were saying earlier, I mean, she's an perf yeah. absolute perfectionist. Yeah. Yes. And when you have to fit into that mould, what they see, mm. that's tough as well. I think what's great about her is that she knows what... She has an instinct for what people can do and for how they appear. Um, she first saw me playing three different American women in three one-act plays at the King's Head Pub Theatre. Okay. And she was in the audience because she was on their board of directors or whatever. And um, so I met her afterwards and she said, I'd like you to come along, I'm doing a new series and read for this and this. So I read the part that I then played, the continuity lady, and it was a long, like a kitty speech, it was a long monologue, yeah. several. And I was laughing so much during... This is a woman who was left on her own in the studio, as it might be now. Everybody's gone home, the camera's on, and there she is just saying, you know, my life is like this, and, oh, God, this... And just going on and on and on. Terribly funny. But then she realised it would be... She'd get more meat out of it if she chopped it up and used me as a continuity lady throughout the whole thing. Um, so how she knew from seeing three American women that I was playing that I'd be able to do this... Posh, southern, yeah. ...right-wing monster... Mm. But delightful, because Fabulous. so many people, when I said your name, immediately That's said... That's what they remember. The How lovely, yes. It is lovely. 